Well, welcome, everybody. This is a really special treat. I am here with Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, one of the great humanitarians, has been spreading peace throughout the world. Sri Sri, welcome. Welcome to the Silicon Valley. I'll start off with this. Peace is a, seems to be your driving mantra. Tell us a little bit about how you came to peace, how you came to peace with yourself, how you came to peace with the world. Well, uh, peace is the basic ingredient. It's the raw material for prosperity. There is no peace, there is no prosperity, there is no happiness, there is no, nothing in life. In a world ridden with so many conflicts, I thought peace is the basic thing that we have to attend to. And neither at home, nor in school, we are taught how to calm our mind down. See, a calm, collective mind is, is the source of creativity. Uh, you created this organization. Tell us a little bit about the art of living. 41 years back, that's when I started this uh, art of living. And I didn't uh, intend to start an organization. I uh, kept sharing what I knew, and then it grew into a big organization, volunteer-based throughout the world. So the basic principle is to make life a celebration. If you observe our mind, we are anxious about the future, or we are angry about the past. So the mind vacillates between these two and we collect a lot of garbage, a lot of stress. But nobody teaches us how to get rid of the stress. So 40 years back when we started, we said a simple technique. You know, there is a rhythm in the breath and there is a rhythm in our thought pattern. There is a rhythm in our emotion. If you attend to the breath, you don't have to feel helpless about your own moods. You can be master of your mood. You can just snap out of that bad mood you have when the stock markets crash, you see. <laughs> when things go bad, you can just snap out of it, turning to your own breath. And then we started uh, teaching the silence programs, you know, how important it is to be silent in order to tap into creativity inside of you. And intuitive experiences. There is an intuitive aspect in all of us, and every business needs that intuition. So we designed about 57 different courses. It's working well. The stresses of the future and the stresses of the past, does that mean you try to live for the present or are you just get to your breathing and when you get to your breathing, those stresses will calm? You start being more in the present moment. You are more alert, you are able to plan better. Your perception, observation, expression all becomes much better much clearer. That's why we call this art of living the uh, learning to celebrate life. As a nonprofit, we know both nonprofits and for-profits have to make money. The way I make money is through my venture capital business. What's the main source, source of revenue that comes into your organization yeah. so that you can it, do all these amazing things that you do? For courses, we do charge an amount mm -hmm. for all courses according to different cities, areas, and looking at the community's affordability. From our teachings, we generate the fund, and then, of course, uh, donation. What's it called so our viewing audience can Art know. of Living Foundation. Oh, yes. terrific. And then we have another wing, another organization called the International Association for Human Values. There we raise funds for uh, disasters and like whatever happened in Ukraine or other calamities when it happened. Uh, we see that the entire fund goes to that project. That's great. The reason I've come up with trust and freedom is that I've noticed that countries that recognize trust or freedom end up succeeding, uh, whereas countries that have corruption at the top end up failing. South Korea is much more effective and happy and because they are the free country and North Korea is not free. And so I have this sense that trust and freedom are what really will drive a society forward. Which do you think is more important, trust or freedom? They go hand in hand. They go together. You have trust, then you, give, you enjoy freedom. If there is freedom, that implies there is trust. I see them two sides of the same coin. <laughs> Good, well then I can't change my tie. See, this is Bitcoin on the front but it represents freedom and trust. And this is what is important. You see, trust should be inside. Then you have <laughs> right. freedom and outside. And then your freedom outside. Yeah. Ooh, maybe I have to make a new tie. <laughs> <laughs> 
a lot of our, our audience is entrepreneurial. They want to start businesses or they're, they've already started them or they're raising money or they're trying to make something happen from nothing. And you have become, whether it feels that way or not, you are an extraordinarily successful entrepreneur. Do you have any interesting advice for those people who are getting started and trying to go on their missions? Whenever you start a journey on entrepreneurship, be prepared to face challenges. Disappointment may come, but uh, rely on your intuitive ability. If you tap into your intuition, things will fall in place for you all the time. Second is um, a broad mind setup. You smile more like yours. You know, like, many of them, they keep such a long face, serious face, and looks as though they are in a constant mourning <laughs> Atmosphere, <laughs> you see. It's not congenial for people to work in that type of atmosphere. So you have to lighten up that atmosphere and create that sense of belongingness. And when you are doing something that is useful for the people, for the planet, for the world, success is for sure. If you are focused only on yourself and make how I can make more money, good, you can make money. But if your focus is only on that, your innovative spirit might be dampened. That's really funny. I've said when they say, well, what, what do you look for in an entrepreneur? I say, well, you know, I'm looking for this passion, this drive. But a lot of entrepreneurs say, hey, I'm going to make money. Or the clever ones say, I'm going to make you money. And those uh, we want to have nothing to do with. We're interested in that vision and that future. That's the thing that drives me to invest. So maybe you become a venture partner of ours. You can sort of help us help us think about what, whether this entrepreneur has the has the true feeling inside them, or whether it's just on the surface they want to get get some money. Fantastic! Probably the wisest man I've ever met. You feel that you're a man who's just slowly but surely come to these conclusions as your world has evolved. In fact, I have no conclusions at all. <laughs> I don't conclude anything. Oh. <laughs> I just let life be and take over. I'm do whatever I don't know. happens. This is uh, an amazing honor and, uh, and a great privilege. And I hope that the world is better off for our interview. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> what a treat.